do this on your own. I've got a mate. I'll ask him for help. Bill Todd. He'll help me for sure. You're an idiot. What's he going to be able to do to help you? I'll find out when I get down there. This is not a game of cops and robbers. You're going to the worst possible place on the off chance that you'll be able to come up with an answer. I have to do something. Oh, don't speak to me. Don't speak to me. I didn't say anything. Good. What about money? You haven't got any, and I am most certainly not going to subsidize your stupidity. I haven't asked for money. Just as well. And what about your job? What about the job I lined up for you? I suppose that's going to be thrown away like everything look, else. Look, I'm sorry. Would you try and be reasonable? Reasonable? How can I be reasonable when, when you're just throwing your life away? All right. And I am going to bed. And if you're not here in the morning, well, you can go to hell for all I care. How far are you going? All the way to Melbourne. That's all right. I uh, promise I won't talk too much. <laughs> oh, I hope you do. I've driven all the way from surface with only the radio for company. Mm. Been on holidays. Four weeks worth. I sure as hell didn't get this sitting behind a desk in Russell Street. Russell Street? Uh, are you a cop? A cadet. That freaked you, didn't it? <laughs> Why should it? <clears throat> I, uh... <clears throat> bet you meet a lot of interesting people. It's a form of inverted snobbery. You like him because he hasn't got any money. I can't see that that's any different than liking some of them because they do have it. Honestly. Look, the fact that Scott isn't rich has got nothing to do with it. I, I like him because he makes me feel happier than anybody else does. So don't spoil it. Darling, I'm not trying to spoil anything. Oh, good. Then you won't mind if I invite him over for the afternoon, will you? Doesn't matter what I say, he'll do it anyway. Right. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to make a call. Oh, sorry. Fiona Thompson. Oh, hello. It's Angela Hamilton speaking. You're Scott's aunt Fiona, actually. He's told me all about you. Oh, has he? Oh, good, I might add. Is he in? I'd like to speak to him. No. No, you can't. He's gone away. But I saw him last night. He, he didn't say anything about going away. Well, that's what he's done. That's what he told me. Uh, th there's been a family problem. He had to go back to Brisbane. Oh, I see. Well, could you tell me when he'd be back? No, I really don't know. 
<laughs> he is coming back, isn't he? I'm not in the habit of lying. If I knew when he was coming back, I would have told you. Now, I'm very busy. Is that all? Uh, yeah. Yes, that, that's all. I would have knocked if I had my hands full. Oh, it's okay. Oh, hmm. I feel like I've been standing up for hours. I have been standing up for hours. And that's Mum. She may be slow, but she always gets there in the end. So do I. <laughs> stop it. Your mum might come in. This girl ain't couldn't stop me. <laughs> anyway, I don't really think she'd mind. No, she probably wouldn't. Wish my mum was like her. Mate, Naka, she's letting you go to the wedding, isn't she? I suppose so. Can't wait. Mm, neither can I. I mean, Susan might be hogging the bathroom anymore. Seriously. I am being serious. And for what it's worth, uh, me being the best man and you being the bridesmaid, I don't really mind us being forced into spending a whole day together. Don't you? Nope, I hardly mind at all. Something wrong? Oh, heavy day at work, that's all. It's not me, is it? Of course not. I just... Need to unwind a bit, I suppose. Well, what say I shout us to the movies? Would that help? You are paying? Don't look so surprised. It's happened before once or twice. Once? Do you want to go or don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Anything to get out of this place. Hey, it's 5.30. We go now. We'll miss Mum. She's been getting on my nerves a bit lately. I'll be glad when we get out of this place. Get a place of our own. Mm, me too. Well, you ready? Yep. And remember, you're paying. <sighs> She's not home. <sighs> Mrs. Thompson's not home. Oh, actually, I'm looking for Scott. He's not home either. Do you know where he is? No. I suppose you don't know where Mrs. Thompson is either. No. <laughs> Maybe they're out together somewhere. Maybe. Thanks for your help. Any time. Changed, you know. Y your hair and that. Yeah. Didn't want to stick out. No. Bill, I need help. Shh. I, I don't want you to wake Mum. Well, what do you want? Uh, money or something? I need help to clear myself. Well, what do you want me to do? I've got to find out who killed Sam. I can't move around. I thought you could ask some questions for me. What sort of questions? Well, it's got to be some sort of clue. Well, don't look at me. I, I only know what you do. I mean, Sam was on the phone, someone hit him with a crowbar. I, I don't know what you want me to do. Well, you could find out some things for me. Well, like, did Selma have any enemies or, uh, or even Mrs. Silver, she might have done it. Oh, no way. <laughs> What's no more crazy than me? Shh. Look, I got to know her pretty well. She couldn't kill anyone. She rehired me. I'm sort of doing all Sam's work now. That's great. Well, if you're there on the spot, you can find out all sorts no. of things. No. Look, you're innocent, right? Yeah. I mean, just give yourself up to the police. Let them handle it. They're not going to convict you for something you didn't do. Not much. Oh, mate, the longer you keep running, the worse it's going to get. You're not going to help me. There's nothing I can do. I'd better go. Look, give yourself up. John. Look, have you got somewhere to stay? Look. Find yourself somewhere to stay. Think it over. Thanks. You call me in the morning, before work. Let me know where you are. Yeah. Do, do, do. La, 
Feel like a visitor? Oh, yes. Any excuse to get away from this. <laughs> Angela Hamilton was here today, looking for Scott. When he wasn't home, I told her he was probably out with you. Oh, no. But wasn't he? Hmm. No, he's gone away for a while, which is what I told her on the phone this morning. Oh, it looks like I've blown it. She'll never believe you now. Anyway, everyone knows the working class can't be trusted. Yeah, a bit like that, is she? Mm. She might be all right if she didn't act like there was a bad smell around all the time. I was a bit rude to her, actually. Mm. Well, I wasn't exactly polite to her on the phone. You never know. She might decide that Scott's not worth the effort. I get the feeling that whatever Angela wants, Angela gets. Hmm. Although, she might think we're giving her the runaround because Scott told us to. And she'll have far too much pride to chase him after that. Hmm. You're smart, aren't you? Not just a pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to answer it? No. Patricia Hamilton. Hello, Simon. How are you? Yes, she's standing right here. Just a moment. It's for you. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been, been out of it. Tonight? Oh, I don't know. It's a bit late. You're moping. Uh, yeah, all right, Simon. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I'll be ready. Okay. Bye. And I'm not moping. No? I don't suppose this has anything to do with Scott Edwards not materialising today. I'm going to get changed. Angela. Cheer up. It's a good thing Bill left me the car. I didn't realise I'd left so much at the last minute. Don't feel like coming with me, do you? Oh, I would love, but it's market day, and I've got the meat and the veggies to... What? We've got a huge supermarket up the road, and you keep going to the market same morning every week. I like it. Besides, the veggies are fresher. They're not wrapped in that stupid plastic stuff, so you can't feel what you're getting. I'm only teasing. And you get service. Not like that supermarket, where all you... <sighs> well, anyway, I like it. Good. Give you a lift, if you like. And bring me home? Don't push your luck. to work. I'm sorry. Look, I, I've been thinking. You want some help? Well, I'll, I'll give you some. Where'd you book in? The Rembrandt, Route 23. Right, look, uh, I'll do some fishing around at work. I'll come and see you at lunchtime. Now, you stay in your room. It's not worth the risk, okay? I'll wait for you, don't worry. And uh, thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Last time last night? <sighs> oh, does that mean yes or no? <laughs> I don't know. I suppose it means yes. I don't know. Some coffee? Please. Angela, hmm? I know you sometimes think that I take too much of an interest in your social life, but I am pleased that you're seeing Simon again. Oh, I guess he's all right. He's more than all right, and you know it. So? So I'm happy, that's all. Well, why? It was so unlike you to be interested in somebody like Scott Edwards. With his, his background, Simon's much more suitable. For who? For you, of course. 
At least you can go out with Simon without worrying about his table manners. Oh, that's wonderful. So I'm supposed to pick my boyfriends for their table manners now, am I? It doesn't matter if they're boring or can't talk about anything interesting, just so long as they've got nice table manners. I didn't mean that. I know that there's more to love than that sort of thing. <laughs> Do you? I've never noticed. You don't give up, do you? I want to speak to Mrs. Thompson. Fiona, there's someone to see you. Come in and take a seat. Thank you. Who is it? Hello, Mrs. Thompson. I'm Angela Hamilton. We spoke on the phone, but we haven't ever met. Look, I'm not an idiot, you know. It's obvious one of you was lying to me yesterday. I want to know who. Buzz off! Uh, now, just a minute, Jill. She's entitled to know the truth. You reckon? How's about you leave this to me, huh? I'd throw her out. I mean, who does she think she now, is? that's enough. I'll see you later, all right? Well, are you going to tell me where he is? No. Why not? Well, I think it's better if you and Scott don't see each other anymore. I think it's none of your business. Yeah, but you don't understand. There are things you don't know about. Well, it might help if you'd fill me in. All right. You're, you're probably wondering why Jill has taken such a dislike to you. Not really. Uh, no, well, <clears throat> you should be, uh, because she's pregnant. Uh, pregnant to Scott? Uh, my guess is that uh, he just wanted to have one last fling. I mean, deep down, he knows he's going to have to stand by Jill, but uh, he's very young. I think he just wanted a couple of weeks where he could blot out his responsibilities. And that's all you think it was? I'm sorry. Well, is he going to marry her? I'm, I'm not sure. That's, that's something they'll have to sort out together. They obviously haven't done too much of that so far. Angela, I know it may not seem like this from your point of view, but Scott is very fond of Jill. Does he love her? Oh, I'm not sure. That's... That's something else he'll have to sort out. Pretty soon, I'd say, wouldn't you? Oh, you're hurt. And you've every right to be. I'm only sorry you had to find out this way. Wrong on two counts. I'm not hurt. And frankly, I don't think you're the least bit sorry. But you've done me one favor. At least I know exactly what he's like. I won't be bothering him again. I mean, here in Melbourne. I'm going to sort things out. Okay, please. I'm going to do it by myself. Oh, no. Mum, it's all right. I've got friends that'll help me. Here? Yeah, and where I'm staying when I ran. Who? Look, I'll explain when it's all over. I haven't got time now. I've been waiting for ages at the markets. Hoping, you know, 
I've got to go. I shouldn't even be here. I've got to, Mum. I've got to get back to where I'm staying. Please, keep in touch. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> Please, please. I know where John Palmer is. The man who killed Sam Selma. He's staying at the Rembrandt Hotel, North Melbourne. Room 23. I can't, I can't tell you that. Look, I'm not a crank. It's the truth. tomorrow at 1 30 and if you'd like to have your say take a squiz at five text page 391 and dogs.